So I am talking about Apache Thrift. Um, I, assume, I know some of the people in here are familiar with this, but I assume most of you are not. Um, obviously, it is an Apache product. Um, so it is a scalable cross-platform, cross-language, binary RPC code generation engine. And yes, that's just a ton of buzzwords thrown together. Basically, it's a method of doing RPC calls and transferring uh, large amounts of data very quickly um, across different operating systems, different languages. And I'm saying binary there. There's actually quite a few different proto protocols you can plug in, but the most common one is binary, so you get pretty good, um, uh, well, you don't have like the overhead you'd have with XML or JSON as far as the data goes. This was developed by Facebook and they open sourced it back in 2007. Uh, soon after that, it became a Apache incubator project. For all the uh, Java and Ruby haters out there, or the Java haters and the one Ruby hater, um, it is written in C++, so you can use it without feeling dirty by touching Java. And it is actively developed. The most recent version was uh, just released in August. So these are all the languages that it currently supports. Um, basically, all of the, the main ones we use, uh, the only thing that I see that's missing is uh, Scala. So uh, it does appear that somebody's working on making it work with Scala, but it is not built into uh, the actual Apache project. Um, well, it says Coco, so I, I assume for the Mac people, if it works with Cocoa, it works with Objective-C, is that correct? So, um, <laughs> These are the things that are currently using it. On the left, we have um, libraries that you might want to use on your project. And if you're using one of these libraries, you can use Thrift to talk to uh, the server. So Hadoop and Cassandra, uh, we're using it. Uh, Blur uses it. All the communication with Blur is done over Thrift, so we're using it on the Clix project and then Hypertable and HBase also use it. As far as um, like actual internet sites and, and large projects using it, uh, Last.fm, I assume everyone knows Evernote, ReCaptcha is probably the most popular CAPTCHA provider and they're using it and of course since Facebook developed it, uh, they're a big user. So a real quick example, um, the example, uh, the thrift file ends in a thrift extension and this defines what your uh, communication is going to look like. You can set up structures and enums, you can create custom objects and it supports um, just built-ins like strings and arrays and uh, sets and f floats and different size integers. So you create all the structures and you create a service to find all your functions on the service and the service uses the structures you previously defined. To Once you have the thrift file written, you just do the thrift uh, generate, and it, if you do thrift without the generate, it gives you a list of all the languages and the, the words. I don't know why they used RB instead of Ruby, but they did. So you can generate real quick all the different code that you want to be able to use with this service. In this case, it uh, generated these three files. To actually use it, um, this might be a little small for the people in the back, but you, um, this is Ruby code, so the user profile object that I defined as a struct earlier, we just create one. We create a thrift socket to whatever the server is, and then at this point, you have to create a transport and a protocol, and both of those are pluggable. Thrift provides a few different transports and quite a few protocols. You can do a JSON protocol. You can do a text protocol if you want to be able to, uh, like for debugging, if you just want to be able to read it very easily. It has a compressed protocol where it actually compresses the data before sending it. Um, so, but binary protocol is the most common. You open the transport, you create a client, and at that point, you just call the functions. So you have your uh, service, you can call store, you can call retrieve, any of the other functions that you define on it just work. Um, and then, oh, I thought I had one more slide. It didn't show up. Um, so the last thing is probably some of you are thinking this sounds really fim uh, similar to Google protocol buffers. And it is. But one of the big things that thrif Thrift provides that protocol buffers don't, there's two things. 
is it works with a lot more languages. Protocol Buffers works with uh, Java, C++, and there's one other one built in natively, but I lost my slide, so I don't remember what it is. I think so, yes, and Python, um, where we saw Thrift works with a ton of different languages. Uh, the other thing is that Protocol Buffers do not have an <coughs> RPC uh, code built in. So it does all the uh, serialization, deserialization, but it does not have the actual implementation of doing the RPC. Or Thrift, that's all built in, and you saw how small the code is, you know, a little bit of setup, and then it's very easy to do um, all the RPC. So that's it.